hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming to the presentation on managing process roles and relationships. I'm Roy Altman, CEO of PeopleServe. First, a little bit about the company that I founded. We're a New York-based corporation. We're coming up on our 10th anniversary later this year. And uh, we specialize in a consulting practice focused on enterprise-wide process improvements and relationship management software, which I'm here to speak with you about today, which has been branded PeopleServe Connections. Our major clients are the names that you see here. Well, why manage roles and relationships? Why am I here talking to you today? And uh, the truth is, because in today's organizations, people play a lot of roles, and they have a lot of relationships that help them do their work. And they're currently not managed well. And the consequences of that are pretty significant. So to illustrate, let's consider Joe. Joe is the software architect for a multinational company. He reports to Bob, the head of a, the global technology group. Joe is assigned out to other projects, sometimes more than one concurrently. The company is proactive about developing their employees and they have a mentorship program that Joe takes part in. They're also experimenting with social media and would like to see how it can foster collaboration and innovation. Joe's also involved in the community and takes part in many of the charitable events supported by the company. But uh, Joe is also able to relax. He's a, a captain of the company softball team. Well, the company knows the value of a guy like Joe. So they invest in state-of-the-art BPM and application-specific software to keep him as, pr as productive as possible. The problem is you only have one organizational structure that's used by each of the software programs used in the company. And the only relationship that's categorized is that Joe reports to Bob. That's the only relationship that can be used in any workflow in any software. And uh, that's a problem because Bob's a high-level executive and uh, isn't really the right person to approve transactions. Heck, he even you know, just recently started using a computer. So what does he do? Well, at first he tried uh, defining his uh, admin, Alex, proxy rights to his uh, transactions. But that's not really the right approach because uh, Alex really isn't the right person to approve the transactions either. And, you know, she's managing five busy execs and really doesn't have the time to chase down project managers to approve transactions. Uh, so the support team uh, customized the uh, structure so the workflow would work correctly. But they had to be careful because you're customizing the organizational structure and one system feeds another and, and so on and so forth downstream. And you really have to be careful about how you change structures and how that will affect downstream systems. Um, but even so, they had to spe specify individual people in changing the structure so that the workflow would work correctly. And, uh, and that worked OK, except it couldn't scale beyond the departmental level. And just as uh, Paul was talking about yesterday, the level two organization at the departmental level, but can't really scale to the enterprise level. Um, and also, as people moved around in the organization, the structure would get out of sync because there's no way uh, to keep that information in sync. So the system support group wrote a little application to uh, manage these relationships and keep them in sync at all times. And that worked pretty well. But really, who has time to develop an application uh, to handle every uh, piece of software in the organization? So Bob and Joe had a meeting about this. They realized it was a problem. And, and Bob truly gets it. He wants to bring the company up to a third level organization. And they decided that uh, Joe would go to the BPM Next conference to see what he can find out that would help him. So Joe uh, learned at the BPM conference about PeopleServe, which creates a central repository of roles, rules, and relationships across the enterprise. It's a cloud-based platform as a service that uses the hub-and-spoke model, so your integration architecture is vastly simplified. It draws information from systems of record and uses that information to construct rules that govern the organizing principles in the organization. And that it disseminates the correct context or view of the organization to each application that needs it. 
Uh, people serve connections creates a functional integration between the people in an organization as well as a technical integration between the software. It depicts relationships the way they exist in the real world within the context of each process. It supports a mix of hierarchical and peer-to-peer -peer structures. And uh, it's configurable by business users. It's meant to be easy to use. And importantly, the structures are dynamic, dynamically maintained by the system. So that it doesn't create an additional administrative burden. All right, now I will attempt to do a demonstration. <laughs> Uh, but please give me a moment because I have to set this up again. So uh, within this system, uh, each tab is a context, and a context is something, is a container that you put relationships and, and people in. So I'm going to open one called uh, my business unit, my business area. And uh, we have uh, a palette of objects here on the left. And uh, some of the objects are a sphere, which is something that represents a person or a, a group of people uh, or a context. And I'll drag a person into this diagram. And I'll bring in Bob. And now I'll drag in a department that he manages. And now I'll connect them using this relationship tool. Touch on the relationship tool, touch on the owner, touch on the member. Try that again. And there we go. Uh, Bob also has a uh, peer relationship with Susan. So I'll bring in Susan. Touch on the relationship tool, touch on Bob, touch on Susan. And there's the relationship. Ah, but I said this was a peer relationship. So to change that, I click on the relationship and go over here to relationship type and change it to peer, and the arrow goes in both directions. You notice also that everything in this system is effective dated and end dated. So for instance, if I have a temporary relationship, such as uh, somebody covering for somebody else while they're on vacation, you just set it up once, and, and you, you, it'll expire uh, when it hits the end date. Also, since everything is effective dated in the uh, system, it creates an audit trail. You can reconstruct uh, the state at any point in time, and auditors love that kind of thing. So now if I save this context, it will uh, replace these icons, Bob and Susan with a single person icon, but my department with the multi-person icon. So the system knows that, that Bob and Susan are individual people and a department uh, represents many people. And let's see why that's the case. If I click on my department and click on the rules tab, it shows that it has a rule attached called software development. And if I click on edit, It'll show this rule. It's a type of rule that's called a structured rule. And that just means that it leverages metadata, in this case from the HR system. It has a field, oops, let's try that again, a field called department that equals software development and status equal active. I can add more conditions. I can switch them around. I can change anything about it. Um, but I mean, as you can see, it's pretty much constructing a SQL statement, which and this behind the scenes does get parsed into a SQL statement. And then when executed, will return the set of everybody who's in the software development department and an inactive status. And what that means is that the system will enforce at all times that anybody who's in an active status in the uh, software development department will be represented by this sphere called my department. And uh, this gets updated in real time as people sort of senses a transaction coming in from the HR system where somebody becomes inactive or transfers department, it'll automatically fire off that rule and, and keep this sphere in sync at all times. Well, let's see how this information is used. 
It's used uh, with a function called getPerson. And getPerson is actually a web service. It's meant to be called as a web service. I just have this page uh, just to, to help with demonstrations. And uh, what it asks for is um, a point in space, a context within a sphere. So I'll pick my business area, and I'll look at Bob. And a direction you want to traverse, the directions can be down, looking down a structure, up, going up a structure, or all in the case of peer-to-peer uh, -peer structures. And depth is the number of levels you want to traverse. You can either traverse all levels or specify another value. And if I run the get person, it will return Daniel, Daniel, Jim, Joe, Melissa, who are the people in uh, my uh, department. If I change the direction to all, then it should bring in Susan also, because there's that peer relationship. And there she is. OK, so not only does uh, Bob have a peer relationship with Susan and manage my department, but he also manages a project of strategic importance to the organization. And I'm going to pull in that project in the form of another context. And I will connect this and save the context. And as I said before, each context is depicted in a tab. So to get this context to appear in another tab, I double click on it, and it comes up in another tab. Here we go. And this shows my project, the project team. It's managed by Jay. Our friend Joe is working on this project, as well as Melissa Mel some other people, and a QA team, which is depicted as another context. What you see here is that contexts can be nested as many levels as you want. So it, with the combination of spheres relationships, spheres with rules attached that represent many people grouped into contexts, you can really have any kind of flexible grouping of workers nested any number of levels you, as you want. And when a rule gets fired off, to reassess a, a sphere, that happens system-wide regardless of how many, uh, how many spheres a person uh, participates in and how many levels nested uh, deep they are in contexts. So let's see how this would be used in the real world. I want to do a, a workflow item um, within the context of my project team. And this time I'm going to start with Joe, our good friend Joe. And I'm going to look up. So this is a, a typical workflow item where Joe is initiating a transaction, and it needs to be approved by his manager. If I run the get person, it will return J, which is correct. Within this context, Joe reports to J, and J is the right person to uh, approve that transaction. But if I do the same thing, uh, oh, I'm sorry, within the context of my business area, It will it will return Bob, and and that's really how this is used. Uh, you you should do your get persons within the proper context. So, uh, in a type of transaction such as requesting a day off, it would be appropriate to route it within the context of the project team, but something of a broader scope, such as something for comp compliance or, or uh, you know, regu anything regulatory, it might be appropriate to do it in the context of my business area. OK, let's take a look at uh, some other examples of how this can be useful in the organization. OK, for reporting, uh, you can slice and dice the employee and population any way you want. So uh, marketing, if marketing wants its reporting roll up a certain way, they can get it. And, if finance wants it a different way, they can get it that way, or et cetera, et cetera. And you know, what happens right now in many organizations is uh, to get reports in the right format, people will download information from various systems and combine them on spreadsheets. So uh, they're spending a lot of time working with spreadsheets and uh, producing these critical reports that live just on somebody's hard drive. And uh, all the embedded business rules that determine the groupings 
uh, are stored only in spreadsheet macros. Does anybody here know of any examples of companies that do mission critical processes on Excel spreadsheets? Show of hands. OK. That doesn't happen, have to happen anymore. People serve forms are a repository of, of all rules and relationships and all groupings that could be used by any application anywhere in the organization. No more spreadsheets. Uh, for security role, for security, you can have spheres group, uh, mapped to security roles. And what that means is if somebody in a security role terminates, uh, that termination uh, immediately reassesses the, uh, the sphere and it sends it out to the security role of the application that needs it. Uh, something we see, uh, I, I'm going to wrap up quickly. Uh, social media, we're going to see a couple of pres uh, presentations on social media. Uh, as I mentioned, Joe takes part in a community of software architects globally. So uh, within social media, he can collaborate with other architects in the London office or the Sydney office. Or if HR is working on something of a sensitive nature, such as uh, a downsizing or a change to the compensation policy, they can have a, a dedicated channel, an exclusive channel, secure channel to work on that uh, where nobody else can, can see it. And here's our company softball team. So if I double click on this, it will bring it up in another context. And uh, in HR, we have the concept of position management. And that means that a person uh, uh, occupies a position. So in this system, it would be a, a sphere within a context. And I can change positions just by drag, dragging somebody out of a position and dragging them back into another position. All right, I am going to switch back to the PowerPoint. And sorry. And back to my original question why manage roles and relationships? Well, first of all, uh, to gain efficiencies, time savings the, from an operational point of view. All of your software works the way it's supposed to do to work. Um, no more manual workarounds, uh, no more. Um, uh, customized applications, no more Excel spreadsheets. Uh, your software integration is vastly simplified. That integration chart, that architecture chart that looked like a plate of spaghetti is now a lot cleaner. Uh, from a compliance point of view, all of your security roles are maintained by the system automatically in real time. Uh, those two weeks a year, those two security uh, audits that you get a year, you can have those two weeks of your life back because everything's in compliance and, and you can generate an audit trail with the push of a button. And uh, more effective management. Um, it, you have better insight into the way people interact in an organization. And uh, I really feel that the way people interact in an organization creates a kind of a synergy that is greater than the sum of its parts and better understanding of the way people interact and how they create value uh, can lead to creative leadership and, uh, and foster innovation. And here's our friend Joe once again. He's now happy because all of his uh, roles and relationships are being effectively managed. And uh, we talk a lot about, you know, and Paul, you brought this up uh, yesterday, uh, what adds strategic value to the organization. And um, I'm going to be going into this in more detail in my chapter in the Intelligent BPM book that's coming up. Um, but with this software, you're seeing the organization in three dimensions, whereas before, you were looking at, at it only in two dimensions. And you know that has to be an order of magnitude, uh, greater understanding of, of your organization. And uh, much like the, creative, the, the connective tissue that keeps our vital organs functioning properly, you can think of this software as the connective tissue between your applications and your software and your processes that keeps your organization alive and healthy. Thanks. Any questions?